disruptions. Yes, you Councillor Thank you. Um, welcome to new members before this coming year. Declarations of interest. meeting held on the 19th of July.
percent of, of, uh, of the documentation, if not purchase orders. Now, I would think there's an awful lot of purchase orders go through the Liverpool City region, so 6% seems to me quite a large amount. But you didn't seem concerned about that. And you also said there's no, there's no issues with fraud or anything else. But 6% It's not that people weren't following processes at Mersey Travel, it's that in some areas of the business, the process did not demand that you um, complete a purchase order because some areas of Mersey Travel had relationships with suppliers that, that meant that they could call off um, goods and services outside of the purchase order framework. Now, what we did, there was nothing improper in that. Not a suggestion that there's any improper behaviour, but on the other hand, it's not, um, you know, it, it, it's, there's clearly risks around that. We closed that door last year quite successfully. Um, it was a big piece of work that um, our procurement and legal team led on during this year of accounts um, to work with those heads of service because obviously you don't want to disrupt their processes in terms of digital. sometime trying to persuade budget holders and heads of service that they ought to complete and I think after giving them um, basically after threat after, after in, in, incentivizing them with the carrot when that didn't work we used the stick and said you're not doing it so from April the first this year it's a no purchase order no pay situation um, so we would be very hopeful that well more than hopeful we would expect that when you look next at this year's year
against the staff or of yours, and actually, I just ask what you need to comment on.
Windows is a region commander for the end bits and all this course of one book that you call us 2016-17. Um, this is Stephanie. Thanks, Jim. Um, so members will recall uh, back in April um, that this committee approved the authorities' internal audit plan. And that plan included 220 days provision for grant assurance work and for other planned reviews. And in addition to this, Mercy Travel also undertakes work on combined authorities' uh, tunnel assets. Um, which is effectively given it no cost. We, we, the authority agreed to place reliance on, on that work as well. So table one on page 46 is the outturn for the first quarter on both that work that's been undertaken by Energy Travel on um, tunnels assets and then those pieces of work that the combined authority um, has, has undertaken directly for itself. Um, you'll see at the top there we've done a planned um, piece of audit work on commissioning um, you'll see that we've just started a piece of work on the publication scheme. And then you can also see there what partnership, um, what, what um, combined authority funding work, that assurance work we've done as well. There's a bit more detail further down the report there on the outcomes of those pieces of work. So table two just makes you aware that for each of the audit reviews that we've undertaken, we've provided reasonable assurance. And that basically means that there's no key issues being found and that based on the work that we undertook, we established that there's basically a sound system of internal control. Um, not to say though, that we haven't made some recommendations to improve um, the control environment. We have done, but there was no significant findings on, on those pieces of work. And page 47 just gives you an, an overview, really, of um, a, a little bit more information on that. Over the page on page 48, we've got another table, which is basically giving you a summary of the values of the grant assurance work that done in, um, in the first quarter. And you'll see as well that we've got a piece of work ongoing on step. I just wanted to draw members' attention to that really. We have relied on the um, grant assurance work that's been undertaken by each of our district partners on the step, um, step funding. But what we are now going to do is a holistic piece of assurance work across um, just to give that additional bit of assurance truly that that arrangement is working that piece of work is just, just starting now, so we'll be able to report on that in the next committee. Um, and then I'll just clarify again that uh, paragraph 3.8 of the publication scheme piece of work had literally just started at the end of the quarter, hence half a day um, time that we put to that, obviously that, that that would be significantly more in the quarter too. So again, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions, Jim, if you have anything for you. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Steph there, careers and enterprise, that's ongoing as well. So, more on that. Uh, yes, it is. So, that is grant, that was also waiting for the claims to come in. So, in that quarter, we had no um, deadlines to meet, so no payments were made. Um, in quarter two, you'll see that um, manifesting itself. Yeah. Thank you very much. So, all that leaves me to do is to move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report. Seven public sector and ten loaded standards briefing, Stephanie Donaldson. Thanks again, Chair. Um, this has just been provided to the committee for information only. Um, and it's really just to draw your attention to um, the public sector and ten loaded standards and the requirements of the combined authority to be compliant with those. So the standards, and you may already be aware, came into effect in April 2013. They're mandatory across the whole of the public sector. And they replaced the previous code of practice that, that we were required to comply with. They were actually updated in March this year, and, um, and that's what's attached to page 55, the updated standards. And just giving you a bit of a summary of paragraph 3.2 there on page 51 of, of what the aims of the standards are. SIPF, the Chartered Institute of Public Finance and Accountancy, they um, write some detailed guidance for us on how we should apply the standards within um, local authorities and over relevant bodies which have to comply with the accounts and audit regulations and of course the combined authority is one of those bodies. What we have previously um, said is that because the combined authority was placing reliance on Mercy Travel's audit work, um, it was also placing reliance on the fact that Mercy Travel has assessed itself, self-assessed itself as compliant with the standards. But we are reaching the stage with the combined authority now where we need to be looking at the combined authority being compliant in its own um, capacity 
And so really I'm just making my official video that what I will be doing now, what I've already commenced, is a self-assessment against the requirements of the standards for the combined authority in isolation, completely separate from that assessment that's already been done in terms of trial. And I will be reporting the outcomes of that, I hope, to the next committee. And then also, at the bottom of page 52, just to draw your attention to, it is a self-assessment process, but there is a requirement also within the standards that that self-assessment has to be externally validated within a five-year period. That gives us until March 2019. So move the recommendations in paragraph two of the report. Agreed.